Sonic Lab TV. Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the new Akai Max 49. Uh, this is a new controller keyboard from Akai that's got something a bit different about it. And what that is, is as well as all the usual suspects, pads and faders and buttons and what have you, it's got CV and gate output. So it will actually drive your analog equipment. Let's take a look at the features. So here is the unit. It's beautiful and bold red. It's actually a very nice sort of lustrous, almost sports car shiny finish. Um, we've got the 49 key version here. Um, this keyboard is a sort of fairly solid synth action. Feels quite nice actually. Um, it's got a sort of chunky feel to it. It's got aftertouch as well, uh, just standard aftertouch. Uh, it's quite heavy. It's got a sort of metal base. And uh, starting over here, we've got pitch and mod wheels, which is like rubberized. Then uh, we've got various different mode switches for the arpeggiator and the sequencer. Uh, more on that later. Then we have 12 backlit MPC style pads. And these also double up as mode switches for the sequencer on Pagiator. These are also pressure sensitive, though they don't send per pad controller data. They either send poly aftertouch or regular aftertouch. And there are four banks of these, which give you a total of 48 possible pads. Then we've got transport control, octave up and down, uh, edit mode buttons, little uh, four row uh, LCD display, uh, rotary encoder with a push, and then cursor controls, uh, different modes for uh, sequencer, and then banks of faders. These faders are quite interesting because what they are is backlit with little LEDs. So you can see the value and you've got four banks of them. So switching between banks, you still know where you are. And that's actually quite a neat little uh, touch actually. Then we've got these uh, eight select buttons here as well, which can be configured in different ways. If also, if you press this button, it becomes the time division for the sequencer and the arpeggiator. What's also cool is this has Mackie control and Huey built in. So we can switch and use it as effectively uh, a sequencer controller for our banks of failures and what have you, but more on that later. So looking around the back, you get to see the uh, lovely red finishes entirety. Nice big uh, logo right there. Uh, this is the first connections. These are the keyboard CV and gate. This is for driving your analog kit. Uh, CV output would typically drive the pitch of an oscillator. So that would be for the pitch. So the keyboard would be mapped to one volt per octave. So you're gear will need to talk uh, one volt per octave. So that's most modern analog equipment. Uh, some of the more obscure stuff like the Korg MS and uh, some of the Moog things might not work with it. Uh, then gate out, which you would typically use to trigger the envelope. So envelope and pitch. It would be nice to perhaps see another couple of CVs so we could maybe map one of the faders or two of the faders to another control or two here, but uh, sadly we can't. Incidentally, we can access this as a separate MIDI port. So as well as the MIDI in and the out, we've got we could send that to external gear and then have this driving some analog gear and address them separately from your door uh, or from the keyboard. Uh, we've also got foot switch pedals, inputs, foot switch one and two, sustain and expression. Uh, as I say, MIDI in and out here, then a USB port for connecting to the computer. That will drive the MIDI over it and also allow you to uh, hook up the software editor. There is a six volt DC power supply, which you don't need because you can power it over USB. And that concludes the tour. Right, so I've got this hooked up to my analog rack. What I have here is my dope for A115 mini synthesizer voice and a couple of Pittsburgh modular. So what I'm going to do is just we'll listen to the... Listen to the notes. I like the way that it just works and it sounds like the scaling is really spot on. If we need to, we can actually affect the scaling and the intonation. There's a couple of parameters here which allow you to affect the scaling. But there's also, um, as well as being able to play from the keyboard and the sequencer and the arpeggiator, we can switch it to be from the pads as well. Which means we can trigger some quite interesting things. And if we hit note repeat, and change the beat divisions. We can do some pretty interesting stuff with that. Uh, as well as this, you can also change the output to be any of the USB MIDI channel ports as well. So that means you can route your uh, sequencer tracks directly through to the CV as well as uh, other external MIDI gear that you might have running out of the MIDI output on this. 
So let's talk about the MIDI side of it. The MIDI keyboard is a single channel only. Uh, you cannot split, you cannot layer. Uh, you can change the MIDI channel of the keyboard and you can switch the aftertouch on or off and change the velocity curves. Coming up to the front panel, uh, the pads, each of the pads uh, can be of note type, program change or bank change, and you can have a different MIDI channel for each of the 48 pads. Coming off to the faders, faders can be various different protocols. They can be uh, MIDI control, uh, aftertouch, increment, decrement, uh, Mackie control, Huey, and uh, that's basically it. But again, each of those can have a separate MIDI channel, so you can mix it up and mash it up quite nicely. So uh, we did mention Mackie and Huey control, and indeed you can set this up to control uh, your door in various modes. We'll have a quick look at that now. So I'm just working in Logic here. I've set up a Mackie control and added the, uh, the control ports are Mackie output and Mackie input. These ports are actually available as a specific port on the Max 49. Now if I close this down, all the faders are set to the specific values. I'll just go up here. You can see that if I move this fader, it's, uh, it corresponds, etc., etc. So I press play. Do that. I can rewind and fast forward as I would expect. And these different banks of faders do different things. So if I open the mixer window, uh, we can obviously see bank one is uh, volume. And the, the cool thing is, is obviously if I change the value of the fader, it updates on the actual unit. Uh, these buttons are mute buttons in Logic. Uh, they mute the, ch the actual channels rather than the door tracks, which is a sort of foible of the, uh, the Logic way of doing things. Next bank is pan control and solo. So if I solo these, and actually if I go back, it shows me the status, which is kind of cool. So uh, take that out of here. Next one is record arm. And then finally, oh, I'll take that out of record on. And finally, we've got track select. You can see that a little bit better just by um, the way this works. Now, obviously, with the banking, um, you probably want to see how that works. If I scroll down to my next bank of faders, you can see that the next eight are, have different volumes, different volume settings. Now, I have set up another program because uh, it is possible to edit the function of these buttons. And what I did is I set these two buttons to be up and down track. Um, because I can go in and edit them, and I can have they can have Mackie values, they can be up, down, fast forward, rewind, so I can modify it to a certain degree, but it, the Mackie and the Huey functionality is limited purely to these buttons here. There's no accessing any of the other ones, and obviously the transport. It would have been great if we could have had the pads to be working as Mackie control for things like, you know, opening and closing windows, saving, you know, markers, all the other functions that we've got there, but we're just limited to the transport control, the eight faders, and the eight buttons. So as well as these control modes, there's something called Akai Connect, which essentially is very similar in concept to the Novation Auto Map. And what it does is it allows you to wrap certain uh, plugins or all of your VST plugins uh, in this kind of Akai Connect software. I'll show you what that does. So Akai Connect is running here. It's like a little server. It has to be running all the time. This is the list of the plugins that I've chosen to wrap. I've got uh, Audio Damage Combinat and uh, a couple of the uh, Focusrite compressors and EQs and the Scarlet stuff. Now, unfortunately, it is only VST, so I'm going to have to quit Logic because that only runs audio units and load something which has VST, and I've got Reaper, so let's do that now. So I'm set up in Reaper here. I've got my uh, drum track, just a standard drum track. I'm going to add some compression to it, so go to my effects. I'm looking for one of the AC wrapped. This is my Scarlet compressor. Uh, I'm going to add that. It's got AC in brackets, which means it has been uh, wrapped for auto connect. Here we go. Now I come to my keyboard and I've got to go into connect mode, which is program 33. So now you can see when I move, I've got the bypass, I've got the input gain. Let's try one of the bigger knobs, threshold ratio. That's all fine, but I'd actually like to remap that. So I can go to my server, I can select the editor here and I can remap these controls. So I'm going to have that button to be enable. I'm going to have this fader to be input gain, uh, say threshold, it gives me the list of all of the ratio, and output gain. And I can save that map. Now if I come back to my sequencer, give you a keyboard view, I now have 
This button is bypass threshold ratio. But if I want to then go back into play, I've got to go back to my Mackie control mode, get it playing, then go back to number 33. And yeah, it's sort of, there we go. So you see, it is a bit clunky. It's not kind of the perfect connection. You can't auto sense that the, uh, the, uh, the plugins are live and it will just automatically do it. So it's not the most elegant. And I did find that I was having some problems when I was switching between plugins. It was a little bit finicky. It doesn't feel like it's quite as highly developed as uh, say the, um, the Novation system, but you know, it's there and it's available. So there's a couple more features we should look at. Uh, we've got the arpeggiator and the sequencer. So we just go into arpeggiator mode, switch the arpeggiator on, and then press a note. When I press and hold the arp mode, I can flip between all the different modes. We've got up, down, inclusive, exclusive, octave range across the top, up to three octaves, random, uh, note double, chord mode, which isn't going to work on a mono synth, mono synth, and all of those kind of things that are very easy to switch. Uh, if I switch it into latch mode, I can get a few more octaves going. Then I can go my beat divisions by pressing this button. Quarter note, quarter note to triplets, eights, up to 16, 32 triplets so I've across the master tempo. Going into pattern mode and then hitting edit means that we've got a pattern mode of uh, arpeggiator. So we can change the number of beats that that pattern has up to 16 and we can also switch them on switch them on or off it's a bit fiddly but it means you can get sort of rhythmic effects as well additionally we've got sequencer mode uh, which gives us access to up to four patterns per patch of up to 32 notes in length so we just go into sequence select mode if i press and hold i can choose from any one of four sequence patterns uh, these are stored in each of the internal memories so you can have a number of them they chain uh, each of these can be up to 32 uh, steps in length so if we go back in we'll select number two and we we'll go into sequence note mode and if i just edit that We've got eight steps. I can change the number of steps. If you look, I bring them down, it switches them on or off on the grid. And this it represents, I can switch the steps, each of the steps on or off. And I've also got a controller mode, sequence of controller, which I can set to be whatever CC number I want. And then just kind of have that going alongside. It's also possible to have key shift on for the sequencer, so I can press, I can play it, then when I... It transposes. Although I'm hearing a funny little glitch in the beginning, which I couldn't seem to get rid of. So you can use the sequencer sort of like an arpeggiator or uh, as a sort of four pattern sequencer if you're triggering other kit, but it is monophonic and uh, it's good for using with the analog kit actually. So the Max 49 certainly is packed full of features and it's a nicely built, nice looking thing. Uh, I like the fact the pads, were, I really like the touch faders. I think that's a great idea and something that works really nicely. The banking work exceptionally well. This is something that you couldn't do with uh, traditional hardware faders unless they were moving faders, which of course would make the price prohibitive. Speaking of the price, uh, we're talking about 309 UK pounds. Other currencies will scroll below. So it's quite an expensive unit, but it does do quite a lot. I think perhaps that part of what it does is not quite as well developed as some of the competition. I'm thinking really the kind of plug-in uh, uh, integration just doesn't feel quite as solid as uh, I'd like it to. And the Huey and Mackie emulation is great. It would have been really nice, like I say, to have more controls available to do that with and using the pads would be great. But that's something that could be addressed in a future software upgrade. In fact, that's entirely possible. And also we've got analog control, uh, which is a great feature really in a, a keyboard that's normal normally, we're just destined for MIDI. Although, like I said before, it would be great to have a couple of extra channels for CV. With all this control, we've got something that's just dying to be controlled, but we can only do uh, gate and CV. So never mind. Um, on the whole though, I think what we've got is MPC pads, quite a nice feeling synth keyboard, the, the Huey and the Mackie control. It's a nice package 
if a little bit expensive.